Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Stack, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, back here at Studio 3B, Canfield, Ohio. We have a special guest today, uh, one of our newer partners, Chris Filardi. Chris, How you doing, buddy? welcome. Great to be on your home turf. Oh, hey. We've, we've traveled across the country this year together, oh, man. Yes, we did. So, Chris, your your relationship with Baird Brothers comes from Come On Media, the Renovation Hunters, soon to be featured on the Outdoor Channel. Uh, it's been a crazy ride thus far. No, it has. <laughs> I'm doing stuff I never thought I'd be doing before. <laughs> right. A, a lot of folks, a lot of folks did. Yeah. And, you know, that was, that was kind of the beauty of the team that you guys brought together. Uh, Nobody was real bashful or shy if, if uh, uh, one of the guys on set would, would say, hey, you're doing this, it got done. Yeah. Well, I tell you, the, the, the crew is awesome, but they're all A types too, so it's always <laughs> fun what happens. You just never know, you know, you just never know. So you have, you have an extensive background uh, from the marketing side to building brands, and, and I know just in our conversation, you've had... You, you've dealt with some pretty heavy hitters, mm -hmm. uh, a couple that I know a lot of folks and myself are familiar with. Take us down that path from Chris Filardi 20 years ago, 30 years ago, and bring us up to 2022. Wow. Uh, so I grew up in Connecticut, uh, New Haven, Connecticut. My dad was a residential construction guy. So on the, on the contracting side, I literally started picking up nails at, at 8 o'clock in the morning and just... When I was eight years old, that's what I did. There was no magnets back then. You did it with a paper bag and picked them up one by one. Yep. And then yep. I'd give them to the guys who were framing and we didn't have guns, we didn't have all that stuff. So uh, I've got a, a, a pretty good uh, feeling towards the construction industry. Uh, when, I, when I went to Penn State, I met my wife at Penn State um, at a frat party, which was also really fun. Um, and uh, we got married at Penn State and then we had our family. I ended up moving out uh, towards uh, Western PA been out here for probably 22 years now. Um, on the business side, I've always worked in home improvement brands, uh, you know, from Werner Ladder, uh, Crazy Glue. Uh, I did a, a, one of the first polyurethane glues uh, with uh, ProBond, which was a professional brand that Elmer's did. Uh, I worked with Long Handle Tools, Jackson Wheelbarrows in Harrisburg, True Temper. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've been in the industry for a long time. You, you mentioned Warner Ladder, and uh, we, we kind of consider them a regional company uh, from the area. And, and uh, that, had to be, that had to be quite the experience. You had, you had to be jet-setting it. Oh, yeah. It was, it was crazy because when I first started, it was, it was all the Werners. It was just a small company. Um, and I just I kind of fell in love with their, their attitude. Actually, it's a funny story. I met Don Warner at the Cologne Hardware Show. And he was doing a videotape with his agency just to promote some new product or something. And I was the only guy that spoke English, so he grabbed me. I said, hey, come <laughs> here. And so when I interviewed him, that's how I ended up meeting the Warners, just because he grabbed me and I did an interview. And when I was done, he's like, hey, you're pretty good. What do you do for a living? <laughs> so that's, that's I a ended up working story. for Warner there, yeah. Yeah, you did. You had quite a stint with Warner. Yeah, I did about 20 years uh, with Warner. And uh, we went from a family business uh, all the way to uh, to where they are now, it's over a billion dollars. Uh, tr trend transition was unbelievable from a small company to sell it to everyone: Depot, Lowe's, Menards. You global, know, global, global. Yeah, I don't remember the number of brands. We had like twelve different ladder brands around the world, so it's very exciting. Unbelievable, unbelievable. But I've always been in the marketing side, you know, and, and <clears throat> so I've always got out and uh, I strive to find stuff that doesn't exist for the brand, you know. And that, that's been a, a really sec a good secret for us. You know, it, 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 and I don't know, we've, you know, all, all said and told, we've probably spent 
three weeks together over the course of the last six, eight months, and and uh, let alone the, the Zoom meetings and the phone calls and this right. and that. But at some point, you shared a story about Werner Ladder and the NCAA that I was never aware of. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was fun. I, you know, we had a situation where uh, back in the day when the tournament happened, whatever facility had ladders would get the shot. And so we figured out, hey, is there a way that we can get ladders associated with the net cutting, uh, which was obviously very authentic and very real. So uh, at the time, our president, Steve Richman, he's the CEO of um, Milwaukee right now, uh, him and I were out at a trade show and we had lunch and he's like, hey, you think we could do something? I'm like, I don't know, I'll try. And, and he literally said, yeah, go, go. I'm like, oh, I need some money. Like, how much money do we got? And so we went through the process and stuff. So it was a, it was a tough deal. It was, it was Warner, it was CBS, it was NCAA, and it was Lowe's at the time. So all four of us had to agree uh, to get that sponsorship done. So it took a little bit of finagling. But once we got it, it was such a natural fit oh. uh, that, you know, we just, we just had a tremendous amount of fun. I mean, I, honestly, I've met... I think there's 14 uh, coaches that have cut the net down that are still alive, and we've actually had events where we had all of them in one place. That's cool. Yeah, it was really That's cool. cool. That's fun. So you've had you've had a very busy career, careers, and and uh, in talking this morning over over, over breakfast, uh, you're you're busy again. You've mm -hmm. you've got some, and we're not going to leave the cat out of the bag, but. Uh, our families are keeping us busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I can let the cat out of the bag, right? Because yeah, she won't yeah, hear there's going to be a little cat. bit of a delay. Hopefully she'll say yes. My, my daughter's getting engaged tonight, so I have to go bop out of there and run to Cleveland for that. So we'll see how that goes. But, oh, well. Yeah, I'm uh, excited. Like I told you this morning, congratulations. Uh, I've got one coming up in two weeks and one coming up in five weeks. And it's it's been a crazy summer. Renovation hunters chasing us all over the country, and, oh. and the kids running us from venue to venue. It's it, but you know what? You know, we we spend a lot of time talking. I know you and I have talked a lot about you know life and balance and all that stuff. And you know, at the end of the day, when I got out of the corporate world, I needed a break. I you know I didn't want to be on. Call. I had calls all day around the world, like you know in the morning, you know, and then we do China, and then we do all these different countries, and then I get to my job at like two in the afternoon, you know? So I really enjoy now having my own business. Uh, my partner and I uh, get along great. We are the, you know, animated individuals, but totally different. So together we are, you know, one and one equals five, you know? So it's been fun partnering with Hal. And, uh, you know, what we do is we just try to connect dots for brands and, and make opportunities where we can. And I'm having fun just doing fun projects. Like I never thought I would have a TV show, right? Right. Ever. Right. It wasn't even in the game plan. But when I was with Hal, it was like we were we were talking. It was like, hey, let's do this. And we started talking about it and it made sense. And he's got the outdoor background. I have the home improvement background. It was kind of like, yeah, let's do this. So so that that led to uh, what Baird Brothers High and Hardwood feels is a very good partnership. Uh, one we're, we're very excited to be part of. And, and that goes to... Uh, I, I'm trying to think back. It may have been late 2021, early 2022 this year. You approached us. Mm -hmm. How did you find Baird Brothers out of all the companies across the United States? You know, it's funny because I live really close. I've heard of you guys before then, but never really did any business with you or anything. Uh, actually, we've got, uh, I got the information on you guys from Christy. From Christy oh, Miller. Oh, Oak Hill Works. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, she was one of the people that we were working with uh, as some of the guests on on the show. And uh, she's like, hey, you got to talk to Steve. He's a great guy. And the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, you you, you came in and, and uh, presented, right? And actually, uh, we were in the Maybe, workshop yeah. half of, of the studio here. And and uh, you you caught our attention. And, and we saw a lot of parallel in Come On Media, Renovation Hunters, and Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, if you recall, I think it was within 36 hours, we said, yeah, yeah we're in. Yeah. And, and, and uh, little did we know, uh, 
you were going to traipse us across the country, but but man, we had a blast following. You know, we had uh, what was it? April we started off in uh, Hyannis, Nebraska. Yeah, Hyannis, and uh, then we bounced back across mm -hmm. and rested for a few weeks, and then we went down to Kreitz, Virginia, and and then uh, <clears throat> not too awful long ago, uh, we spent about eight nine days up in uh, that little town of Tyanesta, right? And had a great for, project. As the first, the first town I ever hunted in. It's Tyanesta. Yeah, so it was really, well, that's your really stomping cool. ground. Yeah, so. it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that was fun. The uh, generating the idea behind renovation hunters and bringing in a cast and crew together, the makers played a big part. How did how did you come about determining yays and nays? when you were selecting oh, your, your folks. It was hard, but you know, we, we had a couple of major objectives from a business, it was like a business promotion of a new show. We felt like everything we do is a year out. So as excited as we felt with that customer after we did their place, no one's gonna see it until February. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we, we ended up uh, interviewing a, a whole bunch of the makers and we decided, Hal and I, early on that we wanted to have a footprint socially. And so we felt like getting influencers, makers that could make furniture, that could be a part of that home improvement environment would really help us generate kind of like a drip uh, groundswell of the show and of the program as we got into it. And then obviously once we hit linear TV, then it all you know, goes together. And we launched in February. So at that point we'll have, you know, we did pretty good. We got a lot of people following us. Uh, we've got great content and people are starting to follow. We do a lot of collaborations. So we picked them out with that sole purpose that we needed help. We needed people that can do really crafty, cool things like make tables and make stuff out of, because we always felt like the table was a really unifying factor in the show, that everybody will eat, drink, pray, and be with their families at the table. Yes. So can we figure out a way to make the table special uh, for a particular customer? Yes. And so we spend a lot of time, especially early on with Kevin and I and Hal go to a site to interview them. We like, we don't tell them, but we look around at stuff on the walls and stuff on the floors and what is it that can survive a renovation and be moved into the point where, my God, that was my grandpappy's chair, you know? Like that's that's how we look for it. And, it, and it's really been a really nice link emotionally with, with the audience. I, I, I had a chance to experience that firsthand. And one of the, on, on two of the projects especially, one project in Kreitz that was so close to perfect you almost didn't want to touch anything. Yeah, and 75 year old cabin. Right. Yeah. And and you guys had the wherewithal to know that, okay, we're not gonna do this complete makeover. We're gonna tweak. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add some of the amenities. And it worked out beautiful. And then to your point of that certain piece of furniture that you referenced, that job site went through a complete transformation, but that chair still stayed there. Yeah. You know. And you know, what's on film and what happens is always a little bit different. What's on film is the conclusion of all the hard work and thoughts. When we're not on film, for those of the part, you know, for all the people that are involved in the show, there's 30 people that, that build and stuff. You know, they have sons and daughters and nieces and nephews and all that. And so we think about, okay, what would a 14 year old kid do here right. at this 175 year old log cabin? Like, what do we do? And so we talk about it. Like, you know, do, do we do cornhole? Do we do games? Do we do fishing? Do we do a dock? We, we will literally take, I don't know, Kevin would, probably disagree on the number. We take 80% of what we're gonna do as a construction job and plan that. And the other 20% kind of happens based on knowing the people, knowing their kids, knowing their family, knowing what they like. And a lot of times it happens after the fact. So Kevin will be talking to the owner about something, asking permission if we could do a floor, whatever it is, right. and we find out something. And then we go back in our meeting and we say, hey, we found out, like uh, the one in uh, uh, Kevin's, uh, the. Uh, Mom, the grandmother used to always say a line, a very sarcastic line to everybody. I'm trying to remember. Do you remember what it I was? Don't, I don't. We ended up making a frame of it. 
I'll, th I'll think of it. Ah, I can't remember. Um, but basically what we did is we would, we would take that and then we make it bigger and put a frame around it and put it on the wall. And so when they come back, they're overwhelmed by the structural changes, but then emotionally say, oh, you know, there's my daddy's chair and there's my grandmother's sign. And, and then they, you know, they cry and get weepy and it's just wonderful. You know, it's hard to explain, but that prep is so important. Most people don't know what, what they, we do in the beginning, but there's a little bit that comes out at the end. You just never really know until oh, it's no, edited, yeah. you know? Yeah, the, the, the emotional side of it uh, was, was so fulfilling to, to be able to experience that, witness that, and, and uh, it, was, it, it was fun. I mean, the, the, whole, the whole series has been fun. And, well, we, and we, we, we talk about those things that we remember, because remember you and I were like, okay, after uh, Ty and Esther, we were like, okay, wow. How many people get to enjoy that kind of emotion in a oh. day's work, right? But there are challenges. There's a ton of challenges. Uh, you know, like there's challenges trying to get sponsors. There's challenges trying to get a location. There's challenges sometimes trying to get product. You know I mean, Nebraska, yeah, like every time we needed something that we didn't account for as good as Kevin and the team does, you know, it's a two hour drive each way. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, out, out, out of Nebraska, I, I remember folks disappearing for half a day just to go on a lumber run. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I would say if, for, for those out there that aren't in the outdoor space, I, I, I say the biggest challenge is that most people think of out, the outdoor channel as, oh, I'm going to see, you know, an animal being shot. And, and, and this is not that. This is... This is really about enjoying the outdoors and trying to get both husbands and wives to sit down and look at something that they may say, you know what, we, you know, we want to motivate them. Like, we should do this. We should get our nieces and nephews together at our place. Oh, we got to fix it up. Yeah. So it, it, it really is the, the challenge of the outdoor world and then taking, we're the only show, the only DIY show this year uh, on the Outdoor Channel. So it's a big deal. It's a big deal for us to expose what we know is an audience that already uses their hands and uses tools. Listen, I've never been ever to a camp or somewhere where somebody wasn't handy. I mean, and so we, this audience is built in and no one really capitalizes on it. And that's really one of the most exciting thing from a business standpoint that your customer, now you're, you're Western Ohio, I'm sorry, Eastern Ohio, I'm Western PA. We know hunting is a big deal here. Um, so it's easier to sell and to work with someone when that happens. But when you go into different brands, like we've been into a couple brands, like I, I remember when we started doing uh, with Sweet Dreams, I'm like, furniture? Really? Yeah. I, I, and, but you know what? Not only did they bring furniture, but they created a, a aura, an atmosphere in the I room. Think, yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. Not just for TV. I'm talking about like to live. Like yeah. it was funny because when they, when she came in, she was like, this is going to stay like this. This isn't staging. Like, no, this is your house. They did it so good that like that, that one was one that I had a, a little bit of difficulty in the beginning, but then once they came in and stepped up and did what they do, I was like, oh my God, this is great. You that, know? that project, I, I may sell my primary house and just call that my residence, yeah. right? They probably let you stay. <laughs> <laughs> but but in, in in talking about partnerships, uh, you you have you have some some great ones in in Crescent Town and Metabo, um, Wall Control, uh, Richard and yep. and, and uh, Steph down at down at Wall Control and and others that that I I'm forgetting. Uh, you mentioned Sweet Dreams. Yep. Uh, but to the media side, you guys started out with the Outdoor Channel, and then you received some news. This is going to be carried through Roku, through Hulu, Slay. through Sling. Yeah, so there's another 60 million uh, devices uh, that, that it will go on. Uh, so we're so excited about the extra distribution um, and and uh, American Outdoor will be another one that takes it. So the, the the Outdoor Network has done a really good job of recognizing. You know, for us older guys, it's like, what do you mean I'm going to get rid of cable? You know, like yeah. they recognize all the different places that you can get content, fundamental content on outdoors, and they're they're maximizing that. And that's part of the relationship that we have with the network. That's really probably one of the biggest attributes of the strength and the success of of the show is just knowing that behind us they got our backs and they're trying to get as much distribution as possible you know we haven't touched on it yet but we're gonna we're gonna jump into that you know the partnership with you and Hal Schaefer and come on media and uh, that's 
two of the key components of Renovation Hunters, the third being uh, our buddy Kevin. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. How, how did you guys become uh, affiliated? I mean, well, I actually hired Hal unknowingly. Uh, I worked with the Outdoor Channel at the time with WeatherGuard, uh, one of the brands I was managing. Okay. And uh, we we got a, a a star from the network to come and do a commercial for us. I was traveling at a customer or something, and I couldn't make the shoot. But I got a call from Harry, our our creative. He was our creative genius. I used to call me. He was he was so good at what he does, but he, he he's very unflappable. And he called me, and he had this like backdrop of a little nervousness, and he's like, "No, it went great." We got the great footage, we got the spot, you're gonna love it. But uh, y y I don't know, you, you might wanna call the talent. I'm like, well, what happened? <laughs> well, it turns out because it was weather guard, they did it in a uh, car wash. Well, no one thinking the water was caustic. So they, Hal put the goggles on, they put them in the back of the truck and they kept running through. And after like the to fourth- To get the shots. To get the shots. <laughs> and then after the fourth one, his arms started getting red and stuff. So he had to run in the shower and wipe off and everything. So I called Hal, you know, to apologize and thank him for going above and beyond and all that stuff. And uh, we said, hey, let's have dinner. We had dinner and it was like, that was it, man. I knew, I didn't know I would ever be in business with him, but I, I knew we'd be friends forever. That's cool. That's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a real good story. And so, then you guys meet by chance, and and you're sitting around talking one day, and you say, "Hey, how about this concept? Who introduced that?" You know, uh, well, first off, the working together was before uh, renovation hunters, the idea or anything. All we really knew was that he really knew everything in the outdoor world. I didn't. I started hunting when I was in my forties, so I was late. Um, and then I knew all like the home improvement stuff and we figured there was something that we could do, but we weren't really sure what it was. And so, uh, we started a company, uh, we started helping brands figure out how to get in the outdoor space and how to get into sports and, and different things for sponsorships. And then as we started spending more time together, we just kind of, we got the idea. We were in Missouri at one of the leases that we do for, for the show, for drop zone. And we just, we started coming up with the idea. And, and the whole thing is, you know, it's funny. Hal's a professional hunter, right? right. World renowned and all that. I'm more like a party hunter. I'm, it, to be honest, I'm like yeah. Western PA. I go, I have my week to go hunting with my friends. You know, we may not get a huge buck, but we're going to get a buck and we're going to cook and have fun and make fires and stuff. So we both have the same love for the outdoors. Um, and it's funny because I thought the answer when I first started, I thought the big thing to cure in the outdoor business was to get young kids to get licenses for fishing and hunting and all that. And at the time, it was down from 11, 15 years. And when COVID happened, everybody started going out again and it totally changed that. Yeah. So when we came into being literally the year that COVID happened, we were like, well, okay, the kid thing is out, but what we can do is preserve people's ability to be in the outside. And what we've learned by just talking to consumers that send in their videos and stuff and want us to be out there is that so many people go and have so much fun at their camp, but they don't have time to do stuff. They don't have time to put a new kitchen in or to put siding in. Now, if it's leaking, that's a different story. Right. But like, usually you're up there for fun with your friends. You're just like, I'll do it next time. So we've kind of cornered a nice niche, which is we're helping people preserve their investment so that when they go up there, they're bringing the kids, they're bringing the cousins, and they can enjoy the outdoors. And that's, that's really how Renovation Hunter started. And I've had, uh, you know, the, the preservation side of it is, is one thing, and I've had the, the privilege of, of experiencing firsthand. It's not about our generation or the families that you have taken on their projects this initial season, but that allows that structure, the, the structure, the mentality, the, the family gatherings to be turned over to the next generation. Right. You know, and I, I've heard, I've heard how talk about, uh, we've had discussion of, of, uh, wildlife management and forestry management and how both affect each other and how both of those affect these next generations of hunters coming up. Yeah, and you know what's funny is like we never, I never, Hal was always on that track. 
I was more like, you know, hey, we can help people. We can get, you know, get them outside. And, and I have no, like with my kids, like I don't force them to do anything outside. I just try to get them outside. Right. You know, we ran around with sticks and played army. So who knows when they're out there, what they do, and they all enjoy the outdoors, you know, a, a, a little bit differently. But what I didn't know, like I knew the brand stuff would work. I knew it was a good concept and all that. But I had no idea the emotional impact oh. that it would have. Like when I, you know, you interview someone and they're crying and they're not crying because they want you to do it. They're crying because all the love that they have for their building and their family and their cabin and they know that if we fix it, it's gonna be preserved. And, and to see that, I never thought that would be a byproduct of anything. I just kind of assumed we'd, we'd do stuff and then move on, but the relationships that we're forging in these towns with the people and, and the homeowners is, is just incredible. I, again, I never even thought it would happen. And, and it is interesting in that you, you touched on the towns and we were in a town in the Northwest section of, of Nebraska, 142, 152, 152. Yeah, right? And it was like stepping back in time. It really was. But I met some of the greatest people mm -hmm. that the, the gentleman that allowed us to ship to his uh, drilling uh, company and because he had warehouse space and you guys had that warehouse full of product, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and, and that was, that was cool. And, and then to the, uh, the little, little town of Tyanesta, they were such a great host. That's, that's a fantastic little town sitting on the Allegheny there, you know? And, and again, the people, that little community where you guys did the, the, uh, the cabin there, I mean, if I'm if I remember right, they just the neighbor the right. neighbor said, "Hey, we're not going to be around for the next ten days, two weeks. Take our cabin." Take our cabin. <laughs> and the other guy had a long extension cord. Was giving us coffee. I mean, they were wonderful. Right? They were wonderful. And then, when you want to talk about tugging on heartstrings, a couple of the families that you guys dealt with, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it, it's nice. Uh, you know, we we we've seen a lot over the, the first year, we've seen everybody just, you know, one side just grateful to have a very efficient, clean place and like, like almost like a sigh of relief, like now we can be here. But we've also seen one, and you, you were there, I, I was, I had to go home at, the, at that one point, but the, the guy in, in, uh, in Kreitz was, you know, he's like, hey, I, I kind of forgot about this. This is, I used to live here and now I'm coming back. And, and now you got someone who we've converted who already was an outdoor person to yeah. be an outdoor person again and make a commitment to his family. I mean, that, who can do that, right? Like this <clears throat> fantastic outcomes to really what ultimately was a simple objective. You've, you've allowed, allowed these families through, uh, through renovation hunters uh, and some of your sponsors, uh, Matabo and, and Crescent and Wall Control and Baird's, you've allowed these families to go to camp, whether they hunt or don't hunt, that's their choice, but to go there, relax, and get back together with their families. Mm -hmm. See, that's why cool I, go, that? I go back to the party hunter thing. I mean, if there's food and there's music and there's a fire and they're outdoors, that's a good place to start whatever it is you're gonna do that weekend. <laughs> so if you happen to hunt, fine. You know, my, my family still makes fun of me for being, they call me a hick, right? Cause I live out and they live in the city. But you know, at the end of the day, what I've learned about renovation hunters is these small towns that so many people in the city, myself included when I was younger, that just looked down upon like, oh, it's this little town. But boy, this, this community, everybody knows everybody. They just got done with calving season. So they're all working together. Uh, they know who has skills, who doesn't, who's the empathy person, who's not. And, and they all thrive in these little towns. People think have nothing, but what they really have is so much better than the cities because everybody knows each other. That doesn't mean they're all buddies, No, but they come, no. they help each other when they have to. And to me, it was a fantastic way to see our country, see these small towns, see how people are either enjoying themselves or just living their daily lives, you know? Once this thing gets rolling, and I, I hope I hope you folks see it when you start watching uh, the renovation hunters on the outdoor channel, 
you're gonna you're gonna see good in America. Yeah. Right. That's a great way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everywhere we went, we saw good. I, I I took away thousands of things from our Nebraska trip, from the landscape to the the project. The one thing that I, sh I share this story all the time. There was one little grocery in town, mm -hmm. and you could still run a tab at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? Hey, that was my job. I had tabs <laughs> about five different places. I mean, <laughs> after the second day, people were like, "Hey, Chris, how you doing?" It's like I just got there, you know. And and they would tell each other, you know, like literally someone in the store would say, "Oh, you need that," and then go call Jim. I'll call him for you. And then Jim, one guy came down and gave me gas, uh, propane gas, because we were filming something for Mister Heater, and he literally she called her husband. He was at work. He goes, oh, I'll go home and get it. He got it, went home, got it, and brought it to us within 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. So the, the, the small towns are wonderful. The other thing that I think was really fun, I was telling my wife about this, is like, you know when you see like at a wedding or something, you see, like, I've got wedding on my mind, but you see a little girl and she's got a dress on and she just really wants no part of it? Well, I thought that was going to happen when we, were, when we were in the restaurants and stuff and you see these little kids and they're real cowboys. I mean, legit cowboys. They ride and they're four years old and they got cowboy hats and boots and everything and they wear them. And they're, that's, you could, I'm like, oh my God, that, these, these guys are really ranchers, you know, and I've never seen that. And it was fantastic to see how the, the young kids and the old kids all got together and hung out. They, they, were, yeah. they, they were taking care of each other. It was, it was fantastic to watch. It, it, it was. Cities have a lot to learn, I think. You know, we've we've had every, every place we went. It, it was a very positive experience. And and I think that has a lot to do with the group of people, the audience that we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, they're outdoor people. They're DIYers. Uh, they're people that if 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 they can, they'll do it for themselves. Right. Right. And <clears throat> but. The core is their neighbors, and they treat each other like neighbors. They might not always get along, but if you're in a bind, your neighbor's going to be there for you, right? You know, I think that's one of the secret sauces, if you will, of, of the show is that it's not, you know, we're on a we're on an outdoor channel. There's a lot of hunting stuff. Some people don't like the hunting part, watching the hunting part. It's not really about hunting. It's about everything you do to create that environment to be outside with your family. You know what I mean? Everything, whether it's food, whether it's how your fire pit is arranged, whether it's what your food plots are doing. I mean, all of that stuff come together to me has been such a kind of a, just a different way to look at things. And, and you know, that's, that's, another, that's another aspect of, of Renovation Hunters and Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, uh, just like Studio 3B here. We, we looked at it as an opportunity to be informational, educational, and to bring new products to folks. And you guys are doing the same thing in the show. Oh yeah. Right? You know, one of the things we've been with Kevin and, and House Help, we've we've been very focused, you know, I don't know, maybe someday there's some type of boilerplate type, you know, strategy we do for each episode. But we, we don't want that. We, we want things to happen all the time that people learn from, that people experience will stay tuned to the show. And we don't, it's not like Hal is a star gets filmed, you know, knocking the first wall down and then we cut and then we come back three weeks later when it's done. Everybody does everything. We have to do it in seven days. And so what that means is that at some point when Kevin assigns somebody to do it, they may not be able to do it for whatever reason, don't have the experience, don't have the time, it's worse than we thought, whatever it is. And then you start to see other people come in and jump in and help. And so it's, it's truly a 15 hour day, every day situation. But at the end of the day, everybody works together really to make it happen, you know? One of the more impressive things from back in April until just a few weeks ago, how not only the show, but the makers and influencers matured as a group. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a matter of six, eight months and every project you could see it. And, and I mean, kudos, kudos to Kevin, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he, he was the guy that had to snap the whip 
but he was the guy that had to gel everybody too. And so y'all, if you don't know, Kevin is our job site supervisor. He's a great guy. Uh, he, apparently they, they say his name differently in all different countries. So it's Tarkovich, Kovich. Tarkovich. Tarkovich. Uh, but anyways, his job is to get everybody to do everything, to figure out what we have to do, to figure out what materials are. Basically everything is on his shoulders. And so when you, when you watch how he does his job, and you see it, you know, he's kind of calm and relaxed and, you know, but, but no nonsense, get it done. I think it's really rubbed off a lot on the staff and, and a lot of the workers, especially the makers, some of them, you know, make furniture. Making furniture is really quite different than doing an addition. <laughs> right. You know, so, much so. but they're all learning and everybody's open to it. And, and again, I, you know, it's again, one of the dynamics in life where you see stuff develop. I, I always assumed and hoped that everything would go great, but to see the personalities develop and to see them start to realize what other people do. In the beginning, every, nobody knows what everybody's doing. They're, they're, you know, we got makers, we got contractors, but when you put them together and they start to realize, oh, wow, okay, you're doing this, you're doing that. So yeah. I think it, it, it creates ultimately a mutual respect. Oh, and very you can much so. feel it, like you can feel it on the job site, especially now where in the beginning we were all getting to know each other. The fun times now are when there's nothing happening. You know, you're cooking food and someone's just yeah. sitting around, they're joking. I mean, those are the moments to me that make me thank God that like I changed my job to do stuff that's fun. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like I really, when, I, when I'm there, I'm, I always take a, account, if you will, and say, okay, I created this with Hal and I'm having a lot of fun and it's a good business model and I'm, I'm meeting all these people and we all have the same thing in common, which is, above and beyond materials and building and all that, it's about preserving fun and preserving outdoor. And most of the people that we deal with have that. So yes. it makes it so much fun, even when you're not working. Yeah. Right, right. It has, it, it, it's, been, it's been a fantastic uh, experience through the first season of filming. And, and I can't wait until folks get a chance to take a look at it. Uh, from Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, thank you for including us with Renovation Hunters and Come On Media. Folks, there is, there, there's some more great stories coming down, down the line at uh, American Hardwood Advisor concerning this group of guys, Renovation Hunters, Come On Media, and uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna con continue to have fun with this. I mean, it, it's been a blast so far, so guys, Stay tuned, more, more cool stuff coming at you. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at bairdbrothers.com. Until next time, 